Welcome back everyone to day two of leagues. Now yesterday we left off with essentially an unlimited gold printing machine and our main strategy set up to try to earn 1 trillion gold in this trailblazer league. So as we run around we're going to be high alking condensed gold and that will eventually push us up to 1 trillion gold. So with that strategy in place, where are we headed off to next? Well, in my opinion, probably one of the strongest parts of the Fremenic region, and for picking it first, is how quickly you can level construction. And there are a lot of high value points locked in the POH, so I'm going to try to finish those first. Well, to start off here, we are level 1 construction, so we do need to get started with it. I think the easiest way is just to do the daddy's home quest. Why do they name it that? I feel dirty saying that every time. Okay, just for finishing the quest, we got all the way to 24 construction. Now, conventional construction requires you to use planks, but I think there's a way to mostly circumnavigate the use of planks, and that will be really helpful, because although we can buy millions of GP worth of construction supplies, we can't buy planks, and uh, if we have to make them ourselves, that's going to really slow us down. So we're just going to use up the rest of the planks from the quest itself. So after using up all our planks, we're up to 29 construction. Now, although we're not going to need too many planks, we do need a few mahogany planks for a specific thing we need to build. Once again, kind of surprised that there's actually mahogany trees on Soul Island. This place is, is kind of coming in clutch. Not very quick to chop these trees, but we only need a couple. Okay, so from here, we're going to use a fire sale to stock up a ton of supplies from the stonemason shop. We're going to actually need a bit of everything. Limestone bricks, marble blocks, gold leaves, and magic stones. We're going to need all those, I think, at some point. You know, a couple thousand, no biggie. So the first thing we can build that doesn't actually require planks is actually a decorative rock. Not the best XP per hour, but probably better than actually going ahead and collecting the planks ourselves. 800 XP per rock's not terrible, but we won't have to do this for very long. Level 47 construction doesn't sound like anything too interesting, but we can actually make a really interesting item at this level, the golden sink. The gold sink is something that's kind of a meme, but that's where you actually use the condensed gold. Now because it normally costs like 10 million gold for one, the experience you get from making the sink is incredibly high. So if we take some condensed gold, some mahogany planks, and some gold leaves, we can make a gold sink for 90,000 construction experience and 200 league points. Yep, that was an elite task, super easy for me to do though. And we are already so close to our next relic. Now, although the gold sinks are kind of insane experience, uh, we don't really want to spend that much time chopping mahogany logs. So we're actually going to move on to another item, the marble fireplace. We only get 4k per construction, but we only need one marble block right now. So I think the XP per hour is actually going to be a little bit higher, but we're blazing through levels. We can probably move on to something else pretty soon. Okay, we found something else that's way better. Conveniently, the league statue is incredible experience. We're getting... 26,000 per statue built, which is absolutely insane. Oh my god, we're getting 7 mil construction experience per hour. Pretty good. More importantly though, we just hit 75 construction, which will allow us to make a gilded altar. Okay, we should start trying to be a little bit particular on how we're actually building our house because the items we're building now are actually, well, they're useful. The gilded altar will be great for training prayer. Not only that, 80 points for that bad boy. All right, the era of low alkene is done with. We are now in the high alchemy era, which means we now get nearly 5 mil per alk of the condensed gold. So good. We just increased our GP per hour by like 40% or something, and that's 40 points for that as well. Okay, so quick calculation. You can do roughly 1,200 alks per hour, and we get 4.8 million GP per alk, which means this is a nearly 6 bill per hour moneymaker. Now, if you're a crazy person, you could actually make an argument that condensed gold is the worst thing in the game to alk, because I can only do it for 20 minutes straight before I hit the max cash limit, and then I can't high alk anymore. So this lap of the Varaka Jewelry course, that will be another medium task complete, but more importantly, we can get our fourth relic. That is incredibly exciting. Now, I've somewhat intentionally put off doing any combat training because the fourth relic is a combat relic. So if we're getting to this tier, your rare drops are now going to be three times as common. That's really nice. 
and there's also some bonuses to Slayer baked in as well. The main part of this relic tier though is two times attack speed more or less for either ranged magic or melee. Well, my plan is to go for ranged, and there's a couple reasons. For one, two tick Venator Bow, that's gonna be crazy. Maybe even get the lifesteal relic and just have arrows flying everywhere, two times the speed, sometimes double hitting, life stealing, that sounds pretty good. But also, I wanna go to Asgarnia and getting the Zerite crossbow would be a really strong end game weapon. And thanks to Fire Sail, we'll be able to get unlimited Onyx bolts which could have some pretty interesting uses. That's all to say we're taking the range relic. So there's not really any way for me to power level my range in the beginning. There's no quests that really give ranged experience, so we're just gonna have to train it the good old fashioned way. Man, the accuracy bonus is so good. You don't really need ranged armor at all, honestly. You just need a bow and some arrows, probably. <laughs> all right, we're already up to 31 range. That didn't take very long at all. Another really nice thing about the short bow, we can train on defensive while still getting a two tick action. So we might as well do this so we can train at both our ranged and defense levels because we're sure is not doing it with a melee weapon. Okay, so we grinded out here all the way to 40 ranged and 40 defense. That'll just be enough to get us a start so we're not so weak and we're not gonna get like one shot by anything that feels like taking a shot at me. Now because Dragon Slayer is auto completed, we can just go ahead and grab ourselves some green dehyde. This will probably be our best armor for a while. If we head over to Oziak, we can also get the green dehyde body. And equipping all three is actually a medium task as well. So it's time to take a break to enact a really interesting crafting strategy. So the first thing we have to do is take advantage of Fire Sail to buy out just a ton of death runes. Okay, we did 100,000 death runes. That's enough clicking for now. That didn't take long, but I don't want to break my five key this early into the league. <laughs> So we're going to take these runes and go to the Tazar area. Now the death runes are a really easy way to get a bunch of Tockle. So you can see if we can sell them to the rune store, we can get a million Tockle pretty quickly. If we did the Karamja Diary, we'd get even more, but I don't think it really matters that much. So with this million Tockle, we can now go to the gem store and buy out the emerald here. It would be nice if it had a higher stock, but we just have to click a bunch. Still doesn't take too long. From here, we can quickly cut the entire inventory. And you might be thinking, oh no, you gotta bank them. You'd be wrong because we can just turn them into bolt tips. So tons of crafting experience, tons of fletching experience, and we don't have to move at all. The only downside is we don't really need emerald bolt tips, but maybe we could attach them to some mithril bolts down the line. Really another good use of fire sale. Oh, apparently we're 750 total now. I didn't even realize that, but we're already up to 50 crafting after just two minutes, so pretty quick. Oh my god, you're joking me. I just decided to buy an Onyx because, well, we're here. That's an elite task. 200 points for that, holy. So good. I, I think we can even cut it, but I don't think uh, we can... We won't be able to make a Fury for a while. In Leagues, magic is actually a bit slower, so that's the bottleneck for me to be able to get a Fury. But honestly, it probably doesn't matter that much. They're so broken strong anyway that anything besides a weapon probably doesn't make a big difference in the early game at all. Okay, so this is interesting. This store is really good. We'll get to it in a minute. The one item that I think I've never used in my entire life, these uh, disc golfing rings, I don't know what to call them. They're actually really good, at least for this stage of the account. Normally they're kind of too expensive to bother with, but we can get unlimited toggle really easily. So we're gonna try using these Tazar rings. We need to get a few more range levels first though. <laughs> now another thing that's kind of busted about the shop, a lot of these pieces of equipment have a hard task to equip them. Unfortunately I can only equip I think the obsidian cape right now, but still that's like the easiest 80 points ever. And we'll come back later to finish up the entire shop. Oh, the Isle of Soul is coming in clutch once again. Killing a fire giant isn't a task in itself, but finishing any combat achievement is, which means that's a uh, really easy 40 points. Oh yes, the tree, there's no line anymore. I'm stupid. There's another task I was trying to do, kill a lesser demon. The one in the wizard's tower is still incredibly packed. There's literally still a line. You get 40 points for killing a lesser demon anywhere though, so who cares, we can go back eventually but that's an easy 40 points. 
the Isle of Soul dungeon has a blue dragon in it. So helpful. So there's 40 points for killing the blue dragon. While we're here, we might as well just save up some dragon bones. We have access to a guild altar now, which means, uh, yeah, we could get our protection prayers pretty quickly. Kind of slow killing these things with a ranged weapon. This major over here is blitzing them and I have a like pea shooter, but there's another 40 points for getting 50 combat. How did I miscalculate this so badly? Oh, I didn't have any burners lit. Well, I don't have any Marantil anyway. I don't think there's anything I could do about that. Well, we need to get more bones. No, what? Ugh, I'm just trying to get protect range. That's all I want for now. Ugh, back to the dragons. Oh, there we go, finally. Protect range. We'll go back eventually for protect from melee, but that would be enough to at least do the fight caves and maybe get a rune crossbow. Now, the reason we want to do the fight caves is for one, there's a lot of points involved. Getting the fire cape is an elite task or a hard task. On top of that unlocks the inner ring of shops. The inner ring will allow us to completely turbo boost our crafting training and get us access to diamonds. There's just a lot of useful things in there. Okay, everyone, it's mushroom roulette. No! Well, apparently it can hit at least 47. Now, one other kind of benefit of having unlimited gold, unlimited death reclaim fees. We never have to run back to get our stuff. We can just instantly teleport it back because we have unlimited money anyway, so who cares? So with our new obsidian disc rings, uh, we've been training on ammonite crabs, just AFK while I edit the video. We're almost up to 70 ranged already. The XP power is really, really quick. Unfortunately, this place is getting really packed though, so we're gonna head out. So we missed a couple really easy point tasks in the house. Building an oak larder, that's 40 points. Building a marble lectern, that's a hard task, 80 points for that one. I believe we can also just build a mahogany portal for another 40 points. Uh, and here's a big one, upgrading our portal nexus to a gilded portal nexus is an elite task for 200 bad boys. And there's more, an achievement gallery is another 80 points. So there were so many tasks in the house that I forgot about. That has just got us over halfway to our next relic. So we finished cleaning up all of the easy and medium tasks that were quick to do, just in Mistelin more or less, and that was enough for us to push all the way to a new region unlock. There's obviously still a ton to explore in Fremenic, but we did manage to take advantage of some of the benefits of Fremenic already, but we're not done with her at all yet. Now we talked a bit about where I wanted to go next after Fremenic, and that would be Asgarnia. Asgarnia has a good amount of gear that is offered for ranged, Armadillo Crossbow, Armadillo Armor, Zerite Crossbow, Pegasian Boots. There's a lot in the region that's going to be incredibly good. So I think we're going to lock that in. I'm still not entirely sure what I want for my third region, but we'll see how things play out. Anyway guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.